at your job. Do you ever have to deal with a nose roller? How about a snub pulley? Well, if you're installing a new conveyor belt system, dealing with the different components can sound like you're speaking a foreign language. Luckily, you've got a team ready to help. Granger's technical product specialists are fluent in maintenance, repair, and operations. So whenever you want to talk shop, just reach out. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Most tax pros leave a message. It's Jane. I'm moving on to a TurboTax expert who beat your price. Adam Devine, tell him how I feel. Hey, tax pro, she's been thinking twice. Just believe TurboTax will beat your price. This is a tax break. Uh! Switch to a TurboTax live expert and we'll beat what you paid your pro last tax season. Make the switch at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. TurboTax full service only. Sign up by 12-20-2024 and file by 4-1-2025. Full details at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. Forward gets out of a tackle. Now turns on the Jets. Up to the 30. The 20. 10. 5. Torrey. Hort. Back to the end zone. 20 in yard play. Guess who? Body. Up the middle. Making another move. To the outside. 15. 10. End zone again. Nice move by Brown. He's got space. He's got six. 35 yard touchdown for Byron Brown. A record setting night for the South Florida quarterback. So far, a little bit of a high snap. Jenty right up the middle. Jenty has room. Ashton Jenty. Give him six. Second and long. Lagarde tries to beat it in a row. It does. All the time. Welcome to the G5 Hive Live, and we are excited to bring you the G5 college football coverage that you love each and every week. I am Luke Probasco. I'm joined by my co-host Justice over here. Always get confused on my on my directions on the camera. If you are watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you're watching us on X, please give us a follow, a like, a retweet. And if you're listening to us in podcast form, please rate and review. All right. Uh, let's uh, move on over to our week seven and review. What do we got, Luke? All right. Well, let's just we, – we don't have uh, a lot here in the P – five versus or p4 versus g5 so we're going to go right into the g5 versus g5 before i get too much further into that we need more likes we need on youtube if you're there we need you to like we need you to share if you're watching us uh, live on x which i see a lot of you guys are make sure you like retweet put a comment if you've got questions Feel free to pop them in there. We will we will uh, show them and and talk talk to them here. Featured G five versus G five matchups: Coastal Carolina at James Madison. Um, that was Thursday. JMU wins thirty nine to seven. Justice, you had eyes on this one. This one. I thought would be a little bit closer. What you? What did you have to take away from this? Yeah, all all of those games Thursday night, none of them were close, right? They were all um, they were all kind of blowouts. Uh, Coastal just JMU's got their number. JMU has destroyed Coastal the last three times they have played. Um, the you know the, the off the Coastal offense did not look good at all. Uh, Ethan Vasco got pulled at one point uh, for Noah Kim, and Noah Kim played just as bad, if not worse, than Ethan Vasco. Um, so, yeah, the, the offense could get absolutely nothing going and just – they were just totally dominated by JMU. You know, uh, the JMU uh, defense isn't as good as, as it does – it's not as good as it was last year, but they do look to be – look look like they're getting – you know, they're improving each and every week. Um, and Alonzo Barnett just does Alonzo Barnett things, and – and JMU just continues to roll. Uh, they look like the class of the Sun Belt East. Um, you know, I, I don't know anyone else in the East that that's gonna necessarily contend with them. You know, uh, Coastal was probably I, I think before that game was in second place in the East, um, and they and they got the, the doors blown off of them. I'm not you know, App State's not App State's not very good. 
Uh, I don't, you know, Old Dominion's record isn't very good. I don't, I don't really know who else. Um, maybe Marshall, right? But you know, we saw Marshall blow the lead against Georgia Southern. Um, I don't think Georgia Southern's looked all that great this year. And so, at this point, uh, JMU is going to. I feel I feel comfortable thinking saying that JMU is probably going to be in the in the Sun Belt champion uh, championship game representing the East. Uh, the West, a lot more competitive in the West, right? Texas State, um, Arkansas State, Louisiana, UL Monroe, um, UL Monroe, who beat JMU for their one conference loss, their one loss on the season. Um, so yeah, JMU just looking really strong and definitely the cream of the crop in terms of the Sun Belt East. And, and Sun Belt with the divisions, you've got the East and the West. Kind of reminds me of the Big Ten East and West, where as living in Iowa, you got to see Iowa. It's like always got a chance where you don't have you don't have Michigan and Penn State. You don't have the. It almost seems like that's what it is there in the Sun Belt. It, it's it's interesting because I feel like it's flipped. I feel like in years past it was like the Sun Belt East was the much more competitive division, and the West there was like really one dominant team. This year it's the West has the has has the more competitive division. And the East kind of has has that one team, so it's kind of cyclical um, year to year. But yeah, Sun Belt the only the only conference in in uh, FBS football that still has divisions. So um, I, I don't think they plan on uh, moving away from that model either. So um, we had Memphis at South Florida. That was Friday. Memphis wins twenty one to three. I watched a few minutes of this, like just to watch a couple drives by South Florida, and I. Did not watch much more uh, than that. Yeah, um, South Florida with Bryce Archie, you know, didn't look good. Yep. Um, Toledo at Buffalo Saturday. Buffalo wins 30 to 15. Defense was pretty darn good. For, yeah. Um, I mean, even before Tuck, I, I watched a little bit of this game before I went to go watch the old Dominion game. And even before Tucker Gleason got hurt, like Buffalo looked pretty good. Um, they were leading that game, and then I think after the Tucker Tucker Gleason injury, that was kind of that kind of was it for uh, for Toledo. Um, but hopefully Gleason can come back and and they can uh, you know be uh, be a contender once again in the MAC. Yep, um, I think they could end up there in Detroit. Another team that I think could end up in Detroit, Miami at Eastern Michigan. Miami wins thirty eight to fourteen. Miami has a pretty easy road here for schedule wise for the next few weeks. I feel like, you know, they, they played some tough non-conference games against P4 schools. Uh, I think this Miami team record wise doesn't show to be that great, but I think they're going to turn on here at the end of the season, middle of the season and end of the season, they could find themselves in Detroit. Yeah, I think uh, this is probably the first game where I think they've kind of played the way you, you would have expected them to this year. So hopefully they've got things turned around and uh, and that will continue moving forward. The the defense has not been good for Miami, and that's that's been a little bit of a surprise for me. Yep. Uh, Northern Illinois at Bowling Green on Saturday. Northern Illinois wins 17-7. to Like we mentioned, Gavin Williams, the Iowa transfer from two years ago, I believe, uh, stepped in for Ontario Brown, did pretty well. I think he got over 100 yards rushing or dang close to it. Um, yeah, Bowling Green, I, I thought they were going to pull this one. I mean, Northern Illinois, pr- really good defensive squad. I thought Bowling Green, they've just been lights out um, offensively. But if I am remembering correctly, they had two quarterbacks that actually went out in the game. Baslack and then their backup also got hurt, and I would not – I do not recall if either of them um, made an appearance back in the game. I did not um, have eyes on this. I was just looking at the play-by-play, and I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get to catch any of that game. Uh, both teams have great defenses, though, and you kind of see that it, it represented there in the score. Ohio at Central Michigan on Saturday. Ohio wins 27 to 25. I watched this one. This one was a fun game. This game reminded me of Central Michigan versus Ball State when Ball State like owned the first half and then Central Michigan owned the second half. It was the same. Like Ohio, it was pretty much like you look at the first half total yardage off the top of my head, probably like 260 something, 
like 230 something to like 68. And then you think that Ohio is going to just roll over Central Michigan when Central Michigan um, quarterback is, goes down and you bring in Jefferson as the backup. But like all he did was run. I don't know what his final passing numbers were, but like he was just running everywhere. Uh, Parker Navarro had a lot of design runs in that first half. And and then it's like Jefferson's just running it. And then Mich- Central Michigan's running game got started. He, I think he went out like six, five minutes left to go in the in the first half. And then they just ran it and they controlled the line of scrimmage and made it close. But then Ohio ended up salting it away with some Tyus, Tyus runs for a first down. But that was a fun game to watch. It was like watching like WWE – wrestlers do body blows boxers it was just this momentum thing it was like all ohio the first half and then all central michigan the second half but then ohio just had enough to to stay on top interesting that you know that when the backup came in he just basically ran the ball that it wasn't bert emmanuel jr if they were just going to run the ball you think they would have put bert emmanuel jr back there and, and let him do his thing but that that's kind of interesting um San Jose, talk about interesting. San Jose State at Colorado State. Colorado State wins 31-24. to Uh, I was able to watch a good portion of this, and San Jose State is interesting. Uh, That's what I got to say about that. Um, You had uh, Brown start the game. Then you had Iga. So Brown started the game, did a touchdown drive the first, and then he had two drives where they weren't so great and then Egit comes in and then he does all right he ends up finishing the game he came in with like a minute 36 38 in the third quarter then he finished the fourth quarter i think he threw for 200 and some yards but uh it, i was talking to you about this yesterday and it was like there's no rhyme or reason it was like second down here comes this quarterback uh, third down, we're going to put in the other quarterback. It wasn't like a drive, and it wasn't like okay, this is a bad drive. It was just like, oh, like it was just alternating plays. Like it was, it was weird. Um, I did find some stuff. Um, head coach, awful at pronunciations. You're pretty good at this one. Uh, Ken Nauma, <laughs> Nauma Tahalolo, something like that. <laughs> he is. He went on record, and he is not a fan of of what is happening right now in this spread and shred offense. He's like, it's it's impossible for an, a quarterback to to get into groove and, and and to get into rhythm if you keep doing this. Um, why am I blanking on the new offensive coordinator's name? Uh, um, Craig Stutzman. Stutzman. He he was not happy. He like threw him under the bus, and he was like, I I'm talking to Craig after the game. So I anticipate we're going to see at least a half from each quarterback, if not a full game from somebody, because coach, I think they got away with it because they had been winning. And then you get a loss here and he, he was like, he was not happy. So I, I anticipate we're, I'm not sure which quarterback it's going to be. I was going to say, did one of them look better? I mean, Emmett Brown, had been, I thought, had been playing pretty well up to this point. Yeah, I mean, he, got, he got he got yanked the game before, but did in this game, did one of them look better to you than the other? Or I think Brown moves the ball better. Like when Brown is in the game, I feel like they have a better running game than when he gets in the game. Um, and it could just be a small sample size, but that's what it just seems like to me so i think it's going to be brown um but i've got no information i mean the, the, on the one thing it sounds i mean just looking at you know box score scouting is when brown's in the game he's always looking for nick nash and walker uh Egan is more spreading it around spreading it around probably a little bit more than yeah. uh than emmett brown does um let's see here and then uh so Washington State at Fresno State. That was Saturday. Washington State wins twenty-five to seventeen. Justin, this was, you got to watch it. Was an bit. ugly game. It was ugly um, because, like, we expected this big time shootout, and it never materialized. I mean, ne- neither offense really got going. Um, it was not. Um, I don't know. It wasn't a great game to watch. 
uh, you know, 25 to 17. Um, we expected this game to, you know, both teams probably be in the 30s or upper, you know, uh, one in the 30s, one in the upper 20s. Um, you know, Fresno State, I'm not, I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, I definitely expected them to, to uh, be, a, be a better team than what they've shown to this point. It kind of got blown out by um, UNLV, lose this game against uh, Washington State. And both of those games, the offense didn't look too great. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a little disappointed in the, in the Fresno State uh, offense uh, in particular um, this season. Expected, expected more things out of them, for sure. Yeah, I expected a jump. I thought, you know, maybe record wise, they wouldn't be as good as they were last year because they, like, they had a lot of offensive and defensive line stay healthy, which is just hard to do. Um, they've done a pretty good job of it, knocked on wood so far this year. I did want to go back to the Central Michigan Ohio game because I brought up the box score. Tyler Jefferson, eight of 13 for 95 yards, and then he had 10 rushes for 28. So, like, he wasn't effective, but they're running the ball. He ran the ball more than. He threw the ball, uh, Marion Lukes, with 20 carries, 110 yards, and three three touchdowns. Um, but, yeah. Um, then we had Arkansas State at Texas State. Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Texas State wins 41-9. to Texas State might be clicking um, as, you know, we get into conference play here. I thought that this one might be – more uh, of an offensive juggernaut of a, of a game, uh, Arkansas State. Uh, Jalen Raynor had, I'm trying to remember, in the first quarter, I think it was a pick. It was like off the receiver's hands into the chest and then bounced off and it was an interception. So, like, he he, he didn't look bad. There's a couple of bad drops and a couple of tips for interceptions and, and whatnot. So, um, we'll see how Arkansas State – does moving forward. I think that they maybe haven't uh, performed up to standards. We kind of thought we were going to have more explosive games from Arkansas State, but Texas State handled business, and uh, we'll see how how they look uh, in the coming weeks. Boise State at Hawaii. Um, that was Saturday. That was a late night one. Boise State wins 28-7. to You heard that right. Boise State wins only 28. And not saying how many touchdowns Ashton Genty had in the first quarter of a game with 28 or anything. They just win 28 to 7. Hawaii's defense played pretty good. Like they, they played kind of, well, they played really good in the first half. Really. Uh, so, Hawaii should have been winning the game in the at halftime. So I only got to watch the first half. I did not stay up for the second half. This looks like you watched the whole game, but it was like he he got tackled and went down. Like, yeah, yeah, was he was not breaking game. tackles yeah, in the first he half. He touched down early in the game. I think their first, sec, uh, probably their second drive, I think it was, um, had a big 50 some yard touchdown run. But yeah, other than that, he like got touched and they did a good job of wrapping him up in that first half. What happened in the second half? Uh, yeah, they, did, they didn't do, do as good of a job wrapping him up. I mean, he ended up with pretty sure over 200 yards or right at 200 yards. Um, like it was kind of night and day difference between the first half and the second half. I, my guess is part of it was the Hawaii offense couldn't really get anything going, so the defense was on the field a lot and they were just worn out. Um, but uh, you know, we kind of saw classic um, Ashton Jainty there in the second half, he just kind of took over and ran away with it. Um, I was super impressed by the Hawaii defense though in the first half, for the most part, they held they held Ashton Jainty in, in check. Um, and you know, the, my, the biggest takeaway for me for this game is at some point, I feel like, and I say this, but hell, Ashton Jainty ran all over the number. I'm assuming, I, I didn't even look. I'm assuming Oregon's number, at least number three this week, if not higher. Um, okay. Ashton Jainty ran all over the number two team in the nation, right? But at, at some point, like you know, team teams are stacking. Hawaii stacked the box, um, and I think at some point somebody is going to just really stack that box, and they're going to force Maddox Madsen to try and beat him. And I don't know that he's a good enough passer to make that happen. Um, if it's on his shoulders for them to win, um, and so this year than previous years is after Genty can catch the ball, he can do damage with the ball in his hands. He's only getting like 
one and a half targets or receptions per game. Like he's he's averaging like five and a half yards receiving per game. Like he's got that in his like toolbox. He can do it. They're just not asking him to do it. So at some point I, I'm kind of anticipating that they're gonna have him do more in the passing game. The um so I, I talked to uh, Clint Carlson who's a, is a Boise State fan because that was my big takeaway was like hey man like if if you know w- when they get to this twelve team playoff if they are the the team that represents the G five like they got to have a quarterback that that can you know can can move the ball you can't just sit there and hand off to Ash and Genty all day um, it worked against Oregon and they didn't win they didn't win but you know he was effective um, and I said like. You know, I, you know what? What's the deal here? And he said, "Well, obviously Malachi Nelson has a better arm than Maddox Matson, but the big difference is is Maddox doesn't take sacks. Uh, Malachi, um, I guess he's still—I don't know if he's slow to process, doesn't move as well. Um, he takes more sacks uh, than Maddox Matson, and that's the reason, part of the reason why Maddox Matson's out there. Um, so I don't know. It just to me, looking forward ahead, uh, looking ahead, I don't." I, I feel like they're gonna have to have better quarterback play to to have a have a real good shot at winning um, in the um, in the uh, in the playoffs if they're fortunate enough to make it. And I'm and I'm really interested to kind of see what happens when they play UNLV. I think that comes up uh, the next week or maybe the week after. Um, uh, the week before Halloween, I believe. So it's next week because Boise is on bye this week. Boise will be coming off a of bye. They play UNLV, um, and and UNLV does play. UNLV be, does play this week. It'll be Friday the twenty fifth. It is UNLV's homecoming. It'll be so it'll be a short week for UNLV, right? Because so they're playing on Friday night. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, kind of uh, kind of interested to see that game. We could see them play each other twice, once in the regular season and once again in the Mountain West Championship. Um, but I'm interested to kind of. See how Max Matson does against that UNL UNLV defense because that UNLV defense is, I mean, it's going to be one of the best defenses they played. Obviously, they played Oregon, uh, but UNLV is one of the best defenses in the G five, and so, in my opinion, so I'm kind of interested to see to see that game. But that was kind of my big takeaway in that Boise State game was, you know, looking ahead and and seeing, trying to figure out how they're going to get more improved um, quarterback play moving forward. So that is going to do it for us this week. We've got um, – come back and join us next week as we discuss what happened in week eight as well as look forward to week nine of the 2024 season as well as bring you up to date on all the latest news and happenings in the world of G5 college football. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're watching us on X, please give us a retweet, a like, and a follow. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please subscribe. Leave those five-star rating and reviews. Thank you all for your support. And until the next time, we are the G55. Most tax pros leave a message. It's Jane. I'm moving on to a TurboTax expert who beat your price. Adam Devine, tell him how I feel. Hey, tax pro, she's been thinking twice. Just believe TurboTax will beat your price. This is a tax break. Uh. Switch to a TurboTax live expert and we'll beat what you paid your pro last tax season. Make the switch at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. TurboTax full service only. Sign up by 12-20-2024 and file by 4-1-2025. Full details at TurboTax.com slash beat your price.